Uh, hi, good evening. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, I've got a, sorry, unfortunately, a couple of technical issues, so I'm on air at the here. Um, but yeah, so, so my name is Mark Easton. Um, I'm a development project manager um, with the housing team for Wandsworth. Um, well, thank you for everyone who can attend today uh, on this uh, golden chilly uh, December evening. Um, I appreciate that uh, this is online is not the kind of a normal practice as we would normally have a a face to face on site with yourselves and the, the residents. Uh, but hopefully, this will be a, a good substitute for the time being in, in this situation we're all in. Um, basically, this is an exciting time at the moment at Wandsworth Council, um, as we're currently in the middle of our um, 1000 Homes program, where basically we're delivering homes um, for Wandsworth Council uh, residents, um, key workers, and other uh, workers associated with the area. Um, we basically, this is to overcome um, the issue, obviously, with most boroughs at the moment, um, of a shortage of housing. So, uh, so we're working very hard to try and to relieve that situation and get as much housing as we possibly can uh, within the existing borough. Um, the things that we generally are work delivering at the moment are around about 60% affordable, uh, which basically covers a mixture of rented uh, and shared ownership schemes. Um, so basically, and then what we do is we cross subsidize part of that uh, with some open market sales um, so that's to uh, cover the cost as it were for our delivery. Um, the current schemes that we're working on um, are built to or exceed the current standards. Um, so not only to ensure efficient and uh, cheap to run, um, but also to ensure that they are future proofed um, so they last many, many years and also cover uh, future generations coming as they come. Um, as you know, uh, circulated from our recent letters and updates, we've been working with late uh, residential um, over the summer, refining the design and conducting further surveys of the estate in readiness to start on site, which is planned for um, early 2021. Um, this that process we've been undertaking for the last six to eight months um, has allowed us to achieve what we believe is good cost for the scheme. Uh, and also good value for the council, um, and obviously deliver a very good scheme. All right, we can go on to the next slide. It should be the cursed one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Um, okay. So the cursed scheme itself, um, after extensive public consultation over the last few years, um, as you may know, we've achieved uh, planning approval in early 2020, um, and this is a we started looking at the scheme in detail um, and then basically working towards detailed design um, based around the approved scheme of waste construction. Um, the new development will involve the demolishment of the existing five garages to the north site um, and also the existing substation, which will be repurposed um, and relocated um, for the scheme. Um, basically, these new garages um, will um, make way for one of the blocks, uh, whereas the other six remaining blocks. Um, will be located on the end of the existing uh, terraces um, with a small gap between them so that they are linked without being directly um, um, constructed right onto the existing building. Um, these new buildings will be of similar height and will create a total of 41 homes for uh, council residents. Uh, along with the new buildings, we will be creating and vastly improving the existing landscape and community areas to the, the overall estate uh, with a view to make it more safer, um, well lit, uh, and overall with a more inviting communal space for all to share and use. Uh, this will include fixed such things as um, the new play areas, uh, extensive new planting, trees, um, general refurbishment of the area, uh, new paths to uh, create links around the estate. Um, if we go on to the next slide. Um. Okay, right. So, um, the issue of the housing asset will create a total of 41 homes uh, with a mixture of 14 affordable, which is the, the social rent and so forth used for uh, council uh, residents. Uh, and then we'll also feature 27 um, open market Excel flats, um, ranging all the, all the scheme will range from one to three beds. And we'll also include a couple of um, wheelchair, fully accessible flats on the ground floor of the top of the block. These flats have been designed to meet all current standards set by the Mayor of London uh, and Wandsworth um, planning policies. 
so it will, will be of good size and well laid out um, to maximise the space available. But also the, the design has been designed to ensure that uh, we respect the existing buildings and residents with guarding their privacy and the, the space they already have. As uh, those of you already uh, have, uh, who have already got parking permits will probably know, uh, uh, we've been uh, had to make the decision which uh, ones of um, that um, based on recommendations of the kind of design and program of building business that um, we're going to have the opportunity uh, closed off the existing car parking site. This decision wasn't taken lightly, but is needed to ensure the safety of our existing residents and those using the estate. Uh, while the works actually take place, um, but the, also the idea of if we close it off, we can hopefully try and minimise that on we're actually on site um, to avoid complicated um, work procedures and so forth. Um, the lessons were issued to the existing residents who have permits, um, and I would urge those who have received them to um, um, submit the information for the application if it's possible, as the process can take some time, uh, and also it'd be good to have this all lined up before. Um, the plan work starting in January, um, and you should be, if you want to submit it, you should get contact from our R team or the permit team to um, take it forward with you. Um, all right, so we can go to the next slide. Okay. Right, um, so this is the, the um, extensive landscaping works now we've talk, I was talking about. Um, as you can see, so the estate, we've got the seven blocks um, dotted around, which you can see uh, in grey, and the existing um, three block, main three blocks, white. Um, basically, we what we've this uh, so we've tried to really um, bring the, the whole estate to kind of a current expected standards for what we do in new housing. So, so we, we do have obviously some existing trees on the main grove there, which will be trimmed and um, then we'll also substitute with additional trees on there and then of course additional trees throughout the whole estate. Um, to add to this, um, generally we will have uh, new pathways, new car parking, uh, so the new play areas, um, extensive planting and even um, we will have to steps in the existing uh, blocks to kind of create a more device and this kind of space for the residents. Um, within that we also will have uh, new cycle racks which is for both existing and um, proposed residents, um, and also we'll actually be featuring now some car charging bays as well uh, to adapt to the to this day as well. Uh, final slide. Yep. Final slide. Yeah, come. Okay. Right. So final one. Um, yeah. So let's say basically just as a kind of free, go back to what we did um, pretty plan quickly. Um, let's say we also we've had the public consultation quite a bit and also picked up the concerns you can see there. Um, hopefully we've addressed all these concerns um, and that's what obviously got us through planning um, um, and basically from now on basically we should uh, achieve those goals we set out to do um, with the new landscaping and new layouts we've achieved um, and also we've mitigated as much of any overlooking issues and added natural surveillance to the state. Um, so basically, we should be, when we complete it, we should be delivering a, a very and a very usable and very communal based um, estate for our existing residents and the incoming residents. Okay, um, and we think with that, I will hand over to uh, Stuart Hamilton now. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Um, Stuart? Thank you very much, Mark. And uh, yeah, welcome everybody to. Uh, meet the contractor event with uh, with weights and obviously ones with uh, borough council uh, this is my third meet the contractor event uh, uh, with ones with team uh, we've previously worked on the stag house and shuttleworth uh, road project so um, yeah, we, we're really happy and very privileged to kind of continue the relationship with ones with borough council um, so a uh, very good kind of introduction from uh, Mark as to um, the scheme, and I'll just elaborate a little bit on um, on some of the points. So, um, if we go to the next slide, um, we we are obviously very conscious. You know, we we are working in and around and very close proximity to uh, the existing uh, estate on the existing estate and. More importantly, um, 
impacting on the existing residents um, kind of uh, their, their areas and, and obviously where they live. So uh, for us and for Wandsworth Council, um, you know, being very mindful that we uh, are, are going to cause an impact and how we can minimize that impact and um, kind of work together with yourselves to to have a successful project and and um, you know keep keep everybody uh, sort of any uh, fears or, or um, concerns try try and uh, resolve those so key features so that, uh, as mark mentioned there's uh, seven new buildings uh, varying between two and four stories that's going to make up 41 new resident residential flats um, it's a fantastic uh, scheme in terms of the landscaping and the upgrade works to to the existing estate and I think you'll be very happy when um, when you essentially see the the finished result because um, I think it will, it will definitely add to to the uh, to the estate um, the buildings have been uh, very carefully designed uh, uh, to have the least impact on on the existing residents in terms of um, kind of sight lines and the outlooks from from your uh, apartments. Um, I think uh, you know the architect uh, and design teams have done a, a fantastic job in essentially what will enhance the, the original estate. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, this is an aerial view of uh, of the three existing blocks. Um, I think we can go to the next one. Uh, and that's obviously the existing estate. Um, uh, next one, please. So the Kersfield Road was uh, originally built on farmland back in uh, the late 1800s. Uh, and then the first um, sort of large scale housing was built um, between 1890 and, and 1910. And then the, uh, the current Kersfield blocks were, bought, were built in the 1970s, uh, which is the estate that we uh, are going to be working on now. Um, so, as I mentioned, you know the the main uh, aims for us uh, is around the sensitivity uh, working on the existing state, and to really uh, strengthen the the qualities um, and provide much needed housing for the borough. Uh, Ian, shall I hand over to you now just to have a little talk through the um, through the development? Are you on mute, Ian? Sorry, and we can't uh, we can't hear you. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me now? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ian Hawthorne. I'm the project manager for the Kersfield development. Really excited to be part of the team um, heading up this new development. All well, very exciting for you guys. It's going to be a major improvement and an upliftment to the general area. Really going to complement the Kersfield estate. So this slide is just a brief um, 3D representation of what's actually going to be built on. So as, if you like, it's bookends. So at the top right hand corner where we've got the block A, which is freestanding block of flats. And you've got uh, coming down Linton Grove, you've got these bookend blocks again on the end. And then you've got block E by the existing garages, which is again, is going to improve the area. Um, we're going to have a uh, new parking, extended parking. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. So at the back of these new bookends, we're going to have new play areas, which are going to vastly improve the, um, the landscaping for the young, for young children. So I bet you must be very excited about that. Um, next slide, please. The next slide is just a, a cross-sectional representation of B 
people coming and going through the, the, the new blocks, if you like. And just some photographs of what's existing at the moment. Uh, bring on to the next one, please. Again, same thing, just showing the footpaths um, and the play areas, and how that's going to look when you walk through it. We can go on to the next one. So just a bit of an artistic impression of people walking through the forest and the, the play area again. If we go to the next slide. So um, a brief introduction to weights. I think, Stuart, if you're there, um, if I can hand over to you, please, because you know weights better than I do. Yeah, so um, uh, weights weight is quite a, a big employer. Um, we have 4,000 staff. Um, and more than 10,000 um, supply chain operatives working on uh, our schemes at the moment. And we work over a wide variety of uh, disciplines throughout the whole of the UK, not just residential, um, but we, we work in uh, constructing care homes, education facilities, um, uh, right through to fitting out Marks and Spencers, etc. So uh, we have a, a very um, wide range of, of works that we carry out. Uh, we, we are very committed to the long-term future of our built environment. Um, we uh, are award-winning uh, corporate social uh, responsibility uh, and sustainability programs. Um, and they, these really underpin um, our vision of becoming a trusted partner in, the, in our um, built environment. And we really do uh, strive to leave a positive uh, legacy in the communities in which we work and live. And um, part, part of us um, being successful bidders in the Kersfield scheme was um, laying those foundations on, on the two previous schemes that I've mentioned earlier, or Wandsworth. Um, the Wakes family is, uh, is now in the, its fourth generation of uh, ownership. Um, and essentially the Wakes family are um, the group shareholders, they own the company, um, and they really are committed to the future of our business. Um, and there's a, a young team of Waits family ready uh, to take over ownership and, and lead the company through the coming uh, years as well. Uh, and the Waits family are, are truly committed to a sustainable sort of long-term uh, vision. Um, through through the um, through the continued work with the company, um, and as I mentioned, yeah, we have successfully operated two other sites in Wandsworth Borough uh, that we've been involved in. Okay, so thank you. The team? Yeah, thank you very much, Stuart. So um, just briefly introducing the team there. So we've got Stuart Hamilton, who's a construction manager, who's done a very good job of introducing us. Uh, we've got Justin Burrows, he's our commercial manager. Uh, Linda Flint will be heading up our health and safety as a health and safety advisor. Then you've got myself as um, number one on site head of the project. Uh, we've got Sam Ismail, he'll be our site surveyor. So you'll see some of these faces on the site from day to day. Uh, Rosie Terrell, she's our design senior design manager. Um, in the background, we'll have Bob Bryant doing document control. Uh, Chris Jones will be doing our planning works for us. And well, you've all met Michelle, she's doing community investment. And I believe we have a, a new person that's joining the team now for community as well. So if we can go on to the next slide then, please. So Waits will be operating the site under the Considered Constru Constructor Scheme. Um, the developer will obviously be um, registered with the Considered Constructor Scheme. Um, the Waits team can be contacted via email at any time at info cursefield at weights.co.uk. Um, so please do so, or you can obviously approach our main site entrance gate if you feel that's okay, but obviously, but you know, we need to be COVID compliant, please. So if you can wear your mask and so on. Um, the site working hours will be Monday to Friday, eight till six. Um, there, is, there is a permission to work on a Saturday from eight till one. We will do our very best to not do that, just to minimize the um, disturbance in the area. Um, please note that deliveries and contractors tend to arrive on sites between seven and eight. Um, and we will have traffic marshals on each gate controlling 
to in and fro in deliveries and people are arriving and coming and going. Um, we'll also be coordinating the refuge collection points. And um, unfortunately, we will have to move some of the bins, which on the next slide, we have the uh, logistics plan. So if we could slide over to that one, please. So this sort of points out the new refuge collection points. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is a Rossbury block of flats at the moment has got a uh, bin store located by the garages and that collection point will be part of the site. So we'll be asking very kindly if you don't mind going up to the other weedy bin location by um, Spreewell and Islington. So if we could do that throughout the development that will be minimal impact. There will be pedestrian access only marked in the blue areas for residents to come and go. This shouldn't affect any um, deliveries of parcels or anything like that. But unfortunately, as Mark said, we won't be able to accommodate any cars on site. The red dotted line is briefly an indication of our hoarding line. And then we'll have our side offices at the back of uh, Rossbury and a pedestrian walkway down the side. If we can move on to the next slide, please. So this is just an indicative timeline. As Mark was uh, pointing out, we're sort of uh, doing the survey works. We just come we're now to the, the end of those survey works. And sort of early 2021, we will commence what we call our enabling works. And then the site will start picking up to site wide piling. Um, we'll have some uh, foundations, which on this site are, are raft slabs, a little bit of concrete work. Um, and then we'll start our main construction of our superstructure brick and block work. And then the internals will commence. Um, the construction program at the moment is sort of heading towards spring, end, middle of spring 2022. Um, and then once all the uh, buildings have been built up to roof heights, if you like, they are what we call a traditional build. So it's brick and block all the way up a scaffolding progressively up as the buildings go up with the brickwork. The roofs will go on, um, there'll be green roofs with um, BVs or solar panels, if you like, on the roof. And then the scaffolding will then come down progressively, the windows will get installed, and the, the uh, contractors will go internally and start to do their first fixes and work all the way through to painting and decorating, at which, at which point the groundworks will return. They'll um, do some hard landscaping, there'll be some stat service connections going on. And then you'll start seeing the groundworks taking shape, the new play areas, and the site will start shrinking back again. And we're in areas will start looking really good. And it's right about that sort of time that the site will really shine. If we can go on to the end. Again, so the next slide is just showing the blocks, which ones are affordable and uh, which ones are the one, two beds. And then you've got the substation, which will be relocated where the garages are at the moment, it'll be at the back of block E, which is the left-hand side of the site of the slide, if you like. Um, moving forward now, we've just got a couple of elevational sort of CGIs. So if we can just step through them, if we go to the next one, and then the next one, so this block, blocks B to D. Um, just keep going through them one at a time. So this one is block A, it's just a representation of the internals, so you can have a bit of a feel for what's happening with furniture and so on, and bedroom layouts. So we can go to the next one, you've got block A first floor, and then the following one. So you've got second floor block A, you just keep going through these slides one at a time, and just giving you a rough feel for communal spaces, bicycle stands what they'll sort of look like inside. So it's block E. Second floor, block E. And this, these are blocks F and G, the two at the back. So these are both identical. So if we just go through, they will be the same. 
and then we've just got another sort of representation through the, the blocks, if you like. Right, on the next slide, we've got our COVID operating procedures. Now, I'm not going to go through it too much because it changes constantly. I think the main thing we need to all understand is we've got, and we will always adhere to the social distancing. Weights have got their own procedures and policies that are in line with the, with the current government guidance. And we're obviously following our current, um, what do you call it, the steps at the moment, which, which tier we're in, so on. So we've got very stringent procedures in place for COVID. Yeah, um, it may be if I can just add a, a, a couple of points. So, uh, as I mentioned, we, we're working with Wandsworth uh, and we're currently on the Shuttleworth Road Scheme uh, and have been working on this site uh, throughout the whole of um, the COVID pandemic. Uh, we carry out um, weekly risk assessments um, in line with Public Health England guidance, uh, as Ian mentioned. Uh, so we risk assess each uh, element of works and each trade that are working uh, on our sites. Um, so not just um, the works as a whole, but each trade and how they work together uh, to ensure that we um, comply with uh, with public health and uh, guidance uh, and ensure that um, we maintain a healthy, uh, safe workforce uh, that um, essentially can go home safely to their families every evening. Thank you. Okay, if we can go to the next slide, it's just a, a poster about washing hands and social distancing has been our key measures and wearing of face masks. Um, and then the next slide, if we can go on. So I'll hand over now for a bit of social value for Kersfield. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, Mark, thank you very much for the intro and um, and also kick starting this session um, and Stuart and um, and Ian. Um, we do have Mark still with us. He's actually on the telephone at the moment, as he explained, he's having a few technical problems. Um, so social value. My name is Michelle McStorley and I'm the Community Investment Manager for Waits Residential. Um, we do have a new colleague who joined our business yesterday, Danielle. And uh, Danielle will be overseeing the Cursefield um, estate development. However, um, she's just coming up to speed on, on what's going to be delivered within the, the London uh, borough of Wandsworth. So just to recap, what does social value mean? It's really about promoting the social, economic and environmental well-being and um, really to create a long term sustainability, sustainability improvement for society. The more social value created, the more the community will benefit. Um, so this is something that we do every day as part of weights. Uh, we do have a social value, value strategy already in place. Um, the strategy for us through uh, the London Borough of Wandsworth is around three key things. And those things are about creating the aspirations of future generations. And also um, when we're saying future generations, it's not just adults, it's not just young people, it's adults as well. Through our education and our training programs, creating prosperity through employment and also spending locally. So how can we build and support the growth of the economy within the borough? Um, creating stronger communities through community belonging, trust, pride, working with the residents and also supporting that long term um, active stewardship for the environment. Um, so there's a number of ways that we create social value and through our Creating Aspirations programme, it's about um, supporting people through the borough um, to benefit from work experience place placements, come through a, a program, an educational program, or get advice and um, information and guidance from, from the likes of us to be able to support them, not only with uh, their classroom learning, but also to encourage people to come into the industry. We run a number of pre-employment training programs, and we have done recently um, throughout the borough and engaging with many residents. Uh, we run traineeship programs for some of those underrepresented groups. So special educational needs, um, you know, care leavers, homelessness, ex-military uh, men and women um, and veterans. So um, there's a number of traineeship pro programs that we'll be running throughout the borough whilst we're, whilst we're working um, and hopefully leaving, leaving that long term legacy behind. And it's about inspiring those young people 
or through, through Wandsworth via the schools and colleges to think about a world of actually raising their game, inspiring them to become, you know, architects and town planners and opportunities that are at their fingertips and for them to consider for their future career, a career of, of choice rather than a career of chance. So creating prosperity benefit in the borough for us, it's about creating new jobs, not just only on the construction project, but also some of those back office functions and some of those professional functions as well. Training weeks on site is what I just mentioned, not just about the training ships and the pre-employment, but also apprenticeships. And apprenticeships is, is so key for many people entering into the job market, but also entering into our industry. The use of SMEs, so small medium enterprises, and also supporting that local spend to support that economic growth and development within the London Borough of Wandsworth. And then creating stronger communities. So it's about making sure that we're hosting those community events, volunteering, supporting our local charities, supporting with funding, giving up our professional time to support those local uh, voluntary charitable organisations and also to make sure that we're being um, an active steward to look after our environment for the future and ensuring that we have sustainability behind everything that we're delivering. So what's up been our approach so far? So in, you know, taking Shuttleworth out of the equation at a moment, but looking at Coastfield over the last couple of months, we, um, during COVID-19, we've bought, we've launched a number of virtual programs um, and reached a number of Wandsworth residents already. We've reached out to many of the schools within the local area surrounding the Coastfield estate. And also again, uh, reaching out to some of those local charities and agencies and partners who um, are, are partners to be uh, in the future. So every single month currently, we are running a pre-employment programme, um, a virtual programme, which takes three weeks. Um, the individuals will gain their level one health and safety, their level one in construction, and uh, their level ones in a number of other areas such as digital skills and employability. Um, at the end of the three weeks, we pay for the individuals to go and sit their CSES test and obtain their CSES card. That card is like a passport, a passport onto any site in the UK. You cannot physically work on any site without being able to demonstrate that you un have a clear understanding and a clear level of competency on health and safety. Um, and this course is really a kickstart to anyone wanting to get into the industry and also get back into work. As I said, uh, we've been running these pre-employment programmes throughout London. We've reached over 500 people. I checked today and we've reached over 26 people within the London Borough of Wandsworth. So it's, it's been really successful. We were running them weekly. We've now changed them to monthly um, in the last week or two since these slides were created. Um, our involvement is not just about um, you know, turning up and having a quick conversation is really engaging with every single participant to support them on their career journey and their career pathways. And if we aren't able to transition those individuals at the end of the course onto a wait site, we're currently working with our labour agencies, such as a new one, Brennan, to transition those individuals into full time employment. So for us, really, the next step around our social value delivery is to continue to reach out and build on the local partnerships, to continue to create a wider virtual work experience programme for all the schools and college learners, and also adults that are thinking about a career change. Um, we're hoping, we were hoping to reinstate work experience from September. Um, and again, the second lockdown came, came, came along and we've had to uh, stop the, uh, the physical work experience, and we're hoping to reopen that again early next year once we're on site and to uh, start the recruitment of our apprenticeships in line with the construction site programme, which um, Ian kindly ran through that into that slide programme back there a few slides ago. Um, so really that leaves us to answer any questions from you. I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now and um, I'm going to go back over to my colleague Gemma and hopefully she will have some questions from yourselves. 
Otherwise, I'm hoping some people may have their hands up and we will unmute you and um, bring you to the forefront for you to answer, ask any questions. Gemma, do we have any questions waiting for the team? Thank you, Michelle. We don't have any questions in the chat box, but we do have someone that has their hand raised. So, George, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, George. Okay. Great. Uh, can I can I just introduce myself? I'm one of the three councillors for this ward. Yep. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, needless to say, I also sit in the planning applications committee. So I supported this development when it was first put forward. So I'm I'm, I'm delighted to see you know that it's actually come to life, and I, I'm glad to see that you know uh, you've put a lot of effort into it, and you know it looks it looks as though it's it's going according to plan. So congratulations on getting it off the ground. Uh, can I just say I did have a question about traffic in the Lytton Grove area and it's probably not so much a, a question for you it's probably more a question for Mr uh, uh, Eastman uh, there's you appreciate there's this traffic restriction right now in Lytton Grove about turning right and there's also going to be another development on Lytton Grove when Putney High has its extension developed and I think what local residents are concerned they certainly may, mentioned this at a neighbourhood working group that I was at that they're concerned that if what happens is that work on the Carefield estate starts either before or about the same time as the Putney High uh, school extension happens, that there's going to be real problems uh, about uh, with, with a congestion and, and, and traffic on that Lytton Grove area. I did notice that one of the, 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 the slides that you put up, it said there wouldn't be any parking on the site, no parking on site, please use Lytton Grove. And I was just wondering, uh, has the planning department, have they, you know, uh, factored in uh, this into the time frame about the, the couple, not just the Kersfield development, but also the Putney High development as well? That's just what I wanted to know. So I think that question is directed to Mark. And um, we've got Mark yes. Eastman on the, uh, on the line. Uh, Mark, we haven't got you on video, but I'm hoping that you are able to join. You can turn it on if I think it's working now. So. Oh, OK. There you go. Right. OK. Hopefully everyone can see me now. Right. Um, yes. Um, obviously, we had spoke to the highways department and everyone looking at the traffic issue and also the availability for parking at the time. Um, so the, the consensus was from talking to highways and the traffic survey we've had done is that there is capacity for parking on Lytton Grove and the surrounding roads, the permits that we are going to be offering to those who have existing permits um, will allow them to park on the, say, Lytton Grove and on the surrounding roads with those, the same permit restrictions. So regarding our construction, we know we have spare capacity. We'll be under any threshold. With the new one, well, see, I haven't got the details to hand of that scheme, so I can't comment 100% on that. Um, so we, we have, maybe we can have a look further into that. But currently, we're under the threshold for any capacities at the moment when we put our residents parking onto the main roads. Okay, thanks for that, thanks. Okay. Okay, um, yeah, I have another person called Mark that would like to ask questions, so I'm going to unmute you. Hi guys, hello, can you hear okay? Yes. yes. Great, thanks. Yeah, and I'm a resident of Holmbush Road. Um, I live at the back and I've met Ian. I've popped into your cabin. Um, a couple of times, yeah, hi, good to see you again. Um, so just Mark's point, I think, was one of the, que I've got, sorry, I've got three questions, if that's okay. Mark's point in relation to traffic is an important one um, because there's a lot of chat going on in our area about left turns, right turns, increased traffic coming down, parking uh, in Rush Home Lytton and all the other areas which are offered so i do think that does need to be very carefully looked at and also the views of the rush home and homebush areas taken into account as to what capacity parking there is certainly in the yeah middle of the day is probably fine um but uh, otherwise it could be problematic in the evening there is a lack of probably lack of parking most of the roads are full one of the questions which i have is in relation to lorry movements so how they will how they will track um we'd be interested to know if you could just 
not at the moment, but perhaps just put some email out to the uh, information about what tr what lorry delivery is, because there's going to be quite a lot of heavy material moving around, parking up, waiting for the traffic marshals to send uh, to send traffic in. So I think we'd like some uh, reassurance on that front, uh, given, as Mark was saying, there's the left, no left turn, no right turn, everything else which is going on at the moment. So that was one question, just to, if you could just perhaps drop an email around or do something uh, about that so we can just see and perhaps just have consultation with Mark on that one in relation to lorries. Um, another one was in relation to lighting of the blocks. At the moment, the blocks that we see from Homebush Road, they have lighting on all night, quite bright lights. And I think uh, if there's any possibility, I know there was some sort of a lighting view, but there was nothing about motion sensitive lights to try to keep the glare of lighting perhaps less than it is at the moment. So there's quite, there are incredibly bright lights on the walkways. So we look on to we look onto the back and it'd be a great opportunity to try to think about reducing lighting, lighting impact. Uh, I know you've done a lighting survey to reduce that. So we might have um, something that's a bit more sensitive because we don't need a monitor. There doesn't seem to be a great need to have a monitor at three in the morning. I don't know about, I can't speak for the people that live in the blocks, but they seem, people seem to have bright lights outside their bedrooms all the time coming out of those blocks. So even though those, the original, the current blocks are not in the, what you might be doing, I think it would be a great opportunity just to have a look at the whole lighting plan um, for the whole, for the whole Kersfield estate to reduce, um, to reduce the, uh, the, the German prison camp <laughs> look, which at times, which at times it has. And that replies to low level to low level lighting, to car park lighting as well. So we really reduced, um, we reduced the lighting. And the final one, uh, which I have is again, Ian, thanks very much for putting up that noise barrier. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Is there any way, because I know- <laughs> I don't know how successful it is, but- <laughs> it's, No, it's great. But if there's any way of putting it so it's higher, because at the moment it's actually not blocking the noise out because it, it sits below your, um, the outlet of that yeah the if there's any way you can it's not high enough yeah yeah, yeah i know if, if going if going forward when we have the when we start in january if that could be it's fine in the winter but it's going to be a real with two cabins if they're going to be the same thing it's going to really noise if there's any way you can keep those but perhaps move change the fencing those i think those noise baffling things are going to be marvelous but if we can just perhaps get some different fencing that pushes them higher uh mm -hmm. so it, so they block out the noise which is coming out of the exhaust engines because at the moment even though i say yeah thanks very much for trying it but the noise is just going straight over the uh over the top of those so we're getting the same noise in there and i know you said piling is going to make it insignificant but <laughs> anything you anything you might be able to do you put one miracle out one rabbit out the hat any a second rabbit would be fantastic so i do have some Bad news and some good news for you. I don't, I don't know how successful I'm going to be by with lifting the screens, to be honest. Sure. Yeah. Um, but the new cabins are all going to be plugged into the mains and they're ah, right. noise. Hey, that's good news. <laughs> so that's something. Oh, that's the, is that the good news or the bad news? Yeah, that's the good news. And okay. then there's, I, and I don't know how much you know about sites, but there will be some lighting on the hoarding. Um, yeah. But we're using the sort of half moon lighting, if you like. Okay. It'll be shining down only onto the footpaths. That's fine. Yeah, just to reduce light pollution because that can be quite annoying, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's mainly it's mainly again going back to the lighting. It, it's in it's on the walkways of the blocks, which are which are higher up on second floor, third floor. It's the existing blocks. If you have a look out at night, you'll see when you're leaving it for hmm. what we're what we're talk, trying to talk what we're trying to discuss. I know it's great. It's having low level downward lighting. That's fantastic. It's it's this lighting in the uh, in the walkways, but that's again, I think that's needed. That's us looking at it, but the residents need to have their say as well. Yeah, what's if best, I can also, what they want. If I can also try and answer your question on the um, construction traffic. Sure. So we have got as part of the planning consent, uh, Wandsworth have 
not really allowed us to deliver between certain times, especially when the school runs on when it's very busy. So deliveries can't really happen at eight o'clock in the morning, if you like. Mm. And uh, they need to be controlled, planned, and, and, and pre-scheduled in. So it's going to be a very controlled um, process, and we're going to spread it out. We're not going to hit the site in a very big, mad rush with loads of trucks coming and going at, in all times of the day. So again, in the afternoons as well, it'll be um, they will be stopped. They won't be able to deliver at eight o'clock in the morning, if you like, and they won't be able to deliver at three. Kids will be collected. So. <laughs> Just to add to that, um, we, we use a delivery management system. So all the deliveries have to be booked in online on the system. Uh, they get an allocated slot. Um, and if the delivery misses that slot, then they have to rebook that in. Uh, and trust trust me, once a contractor has missed their, um, missed their delivery slot, they don't often miss it again. Uh, so we, we essentially have a holding pattern. So traffic isn't allowed into the area. Uh, unless it's coming up to their time slot. So that really helps reduce the construction traffic. Uh, something that we've uh, put in place on the other two schemes because um, uh, very close proximity to uh, nurseries and, and other residential areas as well. So um, we'll be using the same system here at Kersfield. Great, thank you. All right, so I hope that helps whatever you need. No, that's great. And I look forward, you know, we'll certainly be round at the cabins um, working together on sort of seeing anything that's the good bad and but i think the thought for us personally i think it looks a really good a good scheme because i know you need this extra housing in the borough um and it's a good it's a good solution which keeps the space seems to keep that space nice open space which we have in putney yeah it's gonna it's gonna uplift your your outlook yeah it? it's gonna be looking really good yeah, when it is finished, but we keep, we, keep, we keep telling you there's a tree in our garden, which is it's not there anymore. It blew down. We still have it in the plan. Yes, <laughs> right now, I've been told turn. I have to be very careful of that non-existent tree. It's not a tree. No, you must know it's not there anymore. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks very much, and thanks very much indeed for holding this. Oh, stop now. Um, I have Sorry. another question. It's um, the residents of Redgate Terrace is also going to lose some parking. We're very concerned where we're going to be able to park as Little Grove is often already full and particularly around the school hours and also with people getting back um, from working hospital late night shifts and then maybe not being able to park is going to cause um, some anxiety and obviously is a major concern. So I, th I think at this sort of time with uh, COVID, there's a lot of people at home and there's probably quite a lot of, bit, a lot of traffic. Um, when the restrictions do finally lift, um, which I'm sure they will be in, in the summer next year, in this early spring, with all this, uh, what do you call it, vaccines and so on going on, I'd like to think that most people will be going to work during the day when the construction site's actually been Use so hopefully the parking will relief during the during the day and then at night the cars will be standing still on the roads. Thank you, Ian. And we have no more questions that have been submitted. Does anyone else wish to wait, raise their hand at this time? If there is no other questions this no. evening, um, I would like to thank everyone for taking the time for joining us. Uh, Mark, thank you very much for your time, Ian and Stuart. Um, this will be shared um, on the council's website. Um, and I believe um, what we'll be doing is taking some of these questions and inputting these questions into our newsletters with our response for some of your neighbors. Um, you know, please do share the information from this session with, with your neighbours and we hope to meet with you all very soon in the very near future. Um, as I explained, um, I won't be running the social value over at the Curlsfield Estate. My colleague Danielle, who you might have seen a call a minute ago, will you'll be seeing her um, around the site, who will be leading on the social value. If you want to know anything else about the employment or training opportunities, please do reach out to us. Um, you can reach any of the team um, and we will be updating a newsletter um, within the next coming weeks with all of the information on this session. Apart from that, um, it just leaves me to say uh, have a good evening everybody. Um, for those of you who are not at home this evening, please have a safe journey home and um, we hope to see you all again soon in the future.
Thank you.